okay uh, so uh, we are looking at game playing and in the last class we saw the minimax algorithm so if you remember what the algorithm basically does or what the game playing algorithm does is that there are two kinds of players one is max and the other is min and max is trying to maximize the board value and min is trying to minimize the board value and the game tree consists of alternate layers of max and min so starting with a max node there are some min children and then there are max children and so on and so this is a tree which minimax algorithm explores and we saw that this explore minimax algorithm does depth first search uh, left to right okay now today we want to look at an improvement upon minimax which does not inspect this entire tree up to this k ply so this is k ply search that we are doing but can we do without looking at the entire tree okay so what minimax is doing is going down all the way this level and at this level the evaluation function e of j is applied and then the values of these leaf nodes are backed up using the minimax rule and the minimax rule says that if you are backing up to a min level you back up the smallest of the values of all the children and if you are backing up at a max level you back up the largest of the values of all the children so at alternate level we choose the minimum the maximum the minimum the maximum and so on and that's why the algorithm is called minimax algorithm but the question is that do we have to really inspect the entire tree essentially so to consider that let's first look at a small example uh, let us say you're playing this game of tic tac toe and for some reason this is how the game proceeds let us say you play this and we are not drawing, drawing the game tree we'll just draw the board the opponent plays this let us say so the opponent is mirroring your moves you play this and then the opponent plays this and now let's say you are doing some search from this point one ply search and if you were to now consider this move so you play this move here or you are looking at this move then you can see at this moment that if you are considering this move then there is no need to look at all these other children why because this is a winning position and you have won the game so why consider the other moves at all essentially so this is the idea that we will explore up to a greater depth essentially and the algorithm that we want to look at today is called alpha beta so a little bit of nomenclature before we continue max nodes are also called alpha nodes and min nodes are also called beta nodes and max nodes store alpha values and min nodes store beta values so what are these alpha and beta values these are the values of partially computed nodes essentially so let's see how this happens uh, let us say this is a root node which is a max node so we always play the game for max and at some point of the game let us say max is trying to evaluate this particular min child which is not the first min child because it has already seen remember that we are going from left to right 
it has already seen some mean children and the subtrees below that. So, it has already explored the subtree this side and it is trying to now evaluate this mean child and what will it do if, if the value supplied by this mean child is higher than the values supplied by all these children then this would be adopted otherwise those values would be adopted. So, let us say this value is 10 to begin with. So, we say that alpha becomes 10 after this node is completely evaluated which means that subtree below that is completely searched alpha becomes 10 because that is a value this beta node is giving to this. Let us say then, then we evaluate the second subtree below that and this happens to be 15. Now, we change this alpha to 15. So, this alpha value for this max node is the value it has seen so far and the value comes from the left hand side of the tree essentially. So, let us look at a example of slightly deeper example of this tic tac toe game and let us assume that we are using this following evaluation function that E of j is equal to count of the number of rows or columns or diagonals available to max minus the number of the same thing available to min. So, essentially we will evaluate a board position by saying that how many are available to each side. So, for example, if this is the board position that we are looking at, let us say this is the board position we are looking at, then you can see that max has this row 1, 2, 3 and 4. 2 rows and 2 columns max are accessible to max and for min it is this column, this diagonal and this row. So, 3 to min essentially. So, the value of this board position would be 4 minus 3 is min essentially. So, we will use this evaluation function to illustrate this idea of, of cutoffs essentially. So, let us say we are starting the game from the beginning and then first we explore max playing at this corner here. Now, remember that game playing algorithms are use a combination of search or look ahead and evaluation function. So, they do not evaluate this board position at all, they would look ahead a little bit further, evaluate the board position at this horizon and then back up the values essentially. So, let us say about we are doing two ply search because that is easy to depict here. So, we look ahead one more level. So, at this level let us assume that we are looking at this move for min, we are going to look at all the moves for min. So, let us say we look at this move for min and we evaluate the this board position. Now, if you look at this board position and count them carefully you will see that there are 6 rows or columns or diagonals available for max. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, 1, 2, 3 sorry 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and if you look at min then they are 5. So, they happen to be 6 minus 5. So, the board position of this is 1 essentially. Now, this is a max node. So, we are going to compute alpha values for this. So, let me draw it this as a max node and this is a min node because it is min playing here and these are max nodes, but it does not matter. So, at this point you can see that beta will become 1. The moment we evaluate this position and you this node nodes that this beta is 1. 
Now, what are beta values? Beta values are values of min nodes and they are upper bounds on the values that they can take. So, beta values are upper bounds and likewise alpha values are lower bounds. What do we mean by this? We mean that once this node has seen one value from a left child which is 1, it is not going to accept any value which is higher than this value. It is only from the remaining children, it is only looking for lower values. So, this beta value which is the partial value it has got from here is an upper bound on the value of this node. It can only be 1 or less essentially, less if one of the children evaluates to less essentially. So, so far we do not have an alpha value because none of its children is completely evaluated. So, we look at the second child, let us say this is the second option we are looking at. This you can see is symmetric in nature that both are at two corners. So, the number must be equal to 0. So, I will leave that for you to verify. Then let us see this one and this one. Now, if you count this, you will see that max has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and min has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, let me know if it is wrong 5 minus 5 equal to 0. Okay. Okay. So, one thing we should have done, the moment we saw this 0, we should have changed this value to 0, because beta has gone down to 0. So, now 0 is the upper bound on this value. Then we look at this, or maybe this one is 1, 6 minus 6 5 equal to 1. This one is again symmetric, so it must be 0, whatever the count is. And finally, we look at one more move for min, which is this. Now, this it turns out uh, is max as 1, 2, 3, and 4, only 4 available, and min has 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Minus minus 1. So, now we have a new value for beta. So, beta becomes minus 1 and now this node is of course, completely evaluated, which means it can say we can think of these as suppliers. So, beta nodes are suppliers to alpha nodes and below them alpha nodes are suppliers to beta nodes and so on and so forth. Beta nodes always choose the smallest value and alpha nodes will always choose the highest value from what its suppliers are given. So, here we can see that alpha is equal to minus 1, that is a value this first beta node is supplying to it, which you can read as saying that alpha is going to be greater than or equal to minus 1, which is, which is, which is the characteristic of an alpha node essentially. So, from the other children that we going, we look at for max it is only going to be interested in a node if its value is going to be greater than minus 1. So, let us try the second option. Let us say max tries this option and we try the first option for min. Let us say this is the first option we try for min. We always begin from the top left hand corner let us say. Now, you can see that we have already seen this position, this is the opposite of this position and the value of this is 5 minus 6 to minus 1. So, the moment we see this, we know that this is minus 1 and by this you remember that beta is less than or equal to minus 1 and now we here we have alpha is already equal to minus 1 and this beta says that I am going to be minus 1 or less. So, this alpha in some sense will tell this beta that you do not, I am not interested in you anymore. 
that you do not need to evaluate yourself any further which means all these other children that beta was considering like this 5 children we had here, here also we would have 5 children it would not be evaluated. So, this is a cutoff which takes place and this is called an alpha cutoff. So, an alpha cutoff appears at a beta node which is a descendant or in this case a child of alpha node and it happens when the beta node promises to be worse than or lower than or not higher than rather than what alpha already has seen essentially. So, after alpha has seen one side it will now do this in a very controlled fashion it says only as long as you are better than minus 1 I am going to be interested in you otherwise do not explore the sub tree below that essentially. So, this will get cut off and then alpha will try this as a third option. So, if we ignore symmetries I mean if you take into account symmetries then you can see that max has only 3 moves to start with either a corner or on the side or on this and this small move I will leave as an exercise for you to explore. The idea is basically that a cutoff takes place when there is enough information essentially and if you are doing 10 ply search for example, then the entire trees 8 ply trees below this would be cut off. So, the savings would be considerable in amount essentially. So, the algorithm that we are looking at today this alpha beta algorithm essentially is like minimax in the sense that it searches from left to right, but it does cutoffs along the way. So, we have illustrated one cutoff which is alpha cutoff which you can also think of as alpha induced cutoff and it happens at a beta node. So, a beta node stops evaluating itself if the parent alpha node tells it to stop evaluating itself and then it is got an alpha cutoff. In a similar fashion a beta cutoff will take place at an alpha node or it could be thought of a beta induced cutoff. Now, these cutoffs do not necessarily have to be at the immediate level essentially they can happen at a much deeper level. So, let me illustrate that with a diagram which so let us say that you are evaluating this deep game tree so this is a root node alpha node and we are this diagram i'm basically repeating it here you are evaluating this beta node and you have evaluated some part of the tree so, always the left side of the tree you have finished evaluating. So, you have got some value from here alpha 1 from these this side of the tree and essentially what this node is trying to do is to see if it can get a better value better than this alpha 1 value. What is this alpha 1? Alpha 1 is the best amongst these here and it is trying to see if this node will supply it a better value. Likewise, this node may be looking at a alpha child and it may have got some value which we will call beta 1 from the left tree that it has explored on the left side essentially. So, this process continues it this has got some value alpha 2 from here then this has got some value beta 2 from here then let us say this is this is a node let us say this is the beta node that we are about we are trying to evaluate essentially. Now, if this node we will call j which means we are evaluating this slowly by looking at its children the question we want. So, this has alpha 3 2 here. So, I hope this diagram is clear that this is just imagine this depth first search sweep, sweeping from left to right and all these values are coming from the left side of the tree alpha 1 coming from the left children of this when it is trying to evaluate this this in turn is trying to evaluate this it has got some partial values beta 1 this one is trying to evaluate this has got some partial values alpha 2 and this has got some partial values beta 2 this has got some alpha 3 and this j is what we are trying to evaluate. The question we want to ask is 
when will this j value reach the root or in other words when will this j value influence the game essentially is this a node worth exploring you can see that this j value will influence this node only if it is better than alpha 3. So, that means let us call it v j that is the value of this node j because we may be searching deeper must be greater than alpha 3. Otherwise, this node will take alpha 3 from here. Likewise, it must be better than alpha 2 as well because otherwise this will take alpha 2 and also alpha 1. Only if it is better than this alpha 3 value because these are max nodes remember and they are looking for higher values. Only if this node supplies a value which is higher than alpha 3 and higher than alpha 2 and higher than alpha 1 will it influence this root node essentially. Likewise, it must be less than this beta 2 because this is a beta node and it is going to only take lower values and also beta 1. So, we can generalize this and say that we need to evaluate this node j only if v j is less than beta and is greater than alpha, where alpha is equal to max of alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 or in general all the ancestors of this node is all the alpha ancestors of this node. So, alpha alpha must be higher than all these ones and this value must be higher than that max of that and beta is min of beta 1, beta 2 or all the beta ancestors of a node essentially. So, just to repeat this node is worth evaluating thing only if it is higher than this alpha 3 and this alpha 2 and this alpha 1 and at the same time it is lower than this beta 2 and this beta 1 and all the beta ancestors essentially. So, this alpha and beta can be seen as the bounds within which we want the algorithm to search otherwise it should abort the search or prune the tree below that essentially. So, let me write the algorithm first and then we will look at a slightly more detailed example essentially. So, I hope this is clear. So, we can think of this alpha beta as a window. So, if these are the values of the game tree then this alpha beta is a window, beta is the upper limit and alpha is the lower limit. And the absolute possible is plus large and the absolute minimum is minus large. So, remember we had said that the evaluation function can be something like in the range of minus 1000 to plus 1000 or something like that. So, instead of 1000 I am writing plus large some suitably large number and what the alpha beta algorithm does is that for evaluating any node it passes a window and says only if you can get me a value inside this window I am I going to be interested in that. So, again look at this node the window is defined by this alpha and this beta where alpha is the maximum of all the ancestors and beta is the minimum of all the ancestors. And what, what will the node try to do because this example here it is a beta node it is going to try to pull down this beta and say I want a value slightly lower than this beta. If it were an alpha, alpha node it would try to raise the value of alpha. So, as we sweep this tree from left to right this window gets smaller and smaller and search progresses only inside this window otherwise the tree is pruned off. So, let us write this algorithm or at least I will write part of it and you can write the rest. So, alpha beta 
it takes an argument j which is a node and a value alpha and a value beta which are parameters essentially and these these parameters are basically the window sizes that is passed on to the node essentially so let me first ask you what should be the value alpha and beta when we call the game playing algorithm with at the root essentially so alpha should be minus large and beta should be plus large when we first when the first time we call it that means the window is completely open then the algorithm is simpler it's basically a small variation of the minimax algorithm that we have seen so if we assume that we have a function which tells us whether j is on the horizon or not so we can you can do this by keeping some kind of a counter as you search deeper uh, so that every time you make a recursive call the you also decrement the counter by 1 so let's say you're doing 8 ply search when you make this call the counter is 8 when you make this call the counter is 7 and so on and when the counter becomes 0 that means it's a terminal node on the horizon and the implication of being a terminal is that you can you have to apply the evaluation function and stop searching further essentially so if it is terminal then we can say that vj is ej where ej is the evaluation function that you are using in the game else we have to evaluate this children which means you are looking at a node it's not a terminal node so you have to evaluate all the children essentially one by one so for j for let's say i going from 1 to b so let's assume that b is a branching factor or every node has b children and we are going to evaluate them from left to right essentially if j is a max node okay so what what do we want to do here if it's a max node like this one for example or this max node it's got some alpha and beta bounds given to it and we want to evaluate this from left to right so this is uh, j1 this is j2 and so on up to jb we want to evaluate it from left to right and we want to see if we can get a higher value than what alpha has remember it has to operate within this window and seek a higher value essentially so i'll write the part for the max and you can write the part for min so if j is a max node then what you do is alpha gets maximum of alpha and a recursive call for j i the ith child with the bounds alpha and beta the bounds keep getting propagated so what does this step say so we are doing from j i going from 1 to b so for every i will evaluate the ith child and if it's providing a better value which means a higher value because we are using a max function here then alpha then we will update alpha to that side if alpha becomes greater than beta then we say return beta what does this mean so look at this alpha value here it's got this beta bound coming from the top which is the minimum of beta 1 and beta 2 if the value that you are trying to compute for this alpha becomes higher than this beta this beta or this beta it doesn't matter then they are going to say that no need to evaluate anything here so we are making a return statement there and saying return whatever the beta bound is and that's the best you can do with this so this amounts to an beta cut off
because it is happening at an alpha node, it is dictated by the beta value, it is a beta cutoff. Otherwise, if j equal to b, sorry, i equal to b, which means you have looked at the last child and evaluated it, and you have already done this choosing the best of the values, you can return alpha. So, this takes care of the alpha side of things. The other option is else, which means j is min. I will not write this completely, but you can write fill it up yourself. This would be similar if i equal to b return beta. This would be analogous, which says if beta is min of beta and the recursive call. This test will remain the same alpha greater than beta, because this test signifies that this window has closed in some sense. You this alpha value has gone above the beta value, so there is nothing left to explore, but the return value would be alpha in this case. So, you can fill up those details essentially. Okay, so, let us now look at a slightly more detailed example of this algorithm. So, let us assume that we have a, a binary search tree and it is uh, 4 ply deep. So, let us draw the tree first. So, we will have 16 leaf nodes. And since the binary tree, there would be beta nodes sitting here. And then alpha nodes sitting here. And beta nodes here. And this is the root which is an alpha node. So, I have just drawn the space that is going to be searched, the space of nodes, we have not yet drawn the tree. What we want to see is how will alpha beta algorithm explore this tree essentially. Now, observe that the minimax algorithm will explore this entire tree from left to right and back up the values. So, these beta nodes will take the minimum of, of what they get from here, then alpha nodes will take the maximum of the beta children, this beta will take the minimum of this alpha children and so on essentially. So, you want to see what alpha beta does, we will fill in some random values just to explore the algorithm here. So, it, it is doing depth first search left to right. So, it first goes and evaluates the first leftmost node in the tree and let us for argument sake say that this value evaluates to 50, some random value essentially. Then it evaluates this next child and let us say that is 40. So, at this point this beta is completely evaluated, its value is 40. And since this is completely evaluated, this alpha is equal to 40, which remember you must read as saying that alpha is greater than or equal to 40 essentially. Then it starts the next round, it looks at this and looks at this and let us say this happens to be 30, which means this beta is equal to 30. Now, you can see this relation between this beta and this alpha node. This alpha is saying I am at least 40, this beta is saying I am at most 30. So, this alpha node is not going to be interested in this beta node. So, we have a alpha cutoff. So, I will just write alpha here to signify that it is an alpha cutoff. So, we are not going to look at this node essentially. 
then you continue the depth first fashion go here go here go here and let us say that this is seventy and so this beta becomes seventy at this moment and then explore this and let us say this is sixty. Yeah. So this beta is sixty now and this alpha is also sixty, this beta is forty because it is getting this 40 value from here and it is it's essentially asserting that I am 40 or less. This one is getting 60 from here and is saying I am 60 or more essentially. So, which means this beta will induce a cutoff here. So, this will be cut off and this is a beta cutoff or beta induced cutoff essentially. So, we have not looked at those two nodes, those two leaf nodes. In fact, we have not looked at the entire subtree there essentially. So, at this point, this alpha is equal to 40, and again we do depth first search. And let us say that this value is 30. Now, you remember this a node is influenced or the bound that that node gets is influenced by all the ancestors. In this case, there is only one ancestor which has a value which is this root, but this value is 40 and look at this beta node, this beta node is saying it is 30. Of course, it could go lower than 30, but at the moment it is 30. So, this now induces a cutoff uh, what we call a can call as a deep cutoff that because this is upper bounded by 30, this node is never going to be interested what is going to happen here. So, might as well cut it off and this is an alpha cutoff. So, the alpha cutoff does not have to be induced by a parent node, it can be induced by some ancestor essentially. Of course, which is what we have said here explicitly when you have said that this alpha bound is actually the maximum of all the alpha bounds essentially. So, this alpha uh, is 30, it is saying I am going to be 30 or more and let us say we come here, we come here and let us say this happens to be 70 and this happens to be 80. So, now this becomes 70 and this value also becomes 70 and this beta is 70. So, what is happening now when we explore this child, it is getting the bound of beta is 70 and alpha is 40. It still has a window open, so we must explore this, this tree below here. So, we do that in depth first fashion. Let us say that this is also 30. So, then again we introduce a cutoff very similar to this same values. So, this is now 30. Or let us say that this is 80. So, we do not get this cutoff, we do in investigate this node, and let us say this happens to be 90. So, this happens to be now 80, and this says uh, alpha is equal to 80. Now, look at this beta and this alpha. This beta says I am at most 70, this beta saying I am at least 80. So, we have a cutoff here again. So, you can see that we did not look at this node, we do not look at this node, 
and we did a fair amount of cutoffs. So, out of the 16 nodes, this alpha beta algorithm has not seen 6 nodes, it has seen only 10 nodes essentially. As an exercise, I will ask you to fill in values so that the number of cutoffs are maximal, and at the same time, as a different exercise, fill in values so that there are no cutoffs at all. Now, it is possible that the values are such that there are no cutoffs essentially, and that happens because the algorithm is searching from left to right. And what does left and right mean? It basically means in what order you are generating the moves essentially. This is some game in which you have two moves, let us call them A and B. You are generating A first and then B essentially. Now, what this exercise will reveal to you is now what is the minimax value of this game tree? This is 70, this is 40, and this is an alpha node. So, this value is actually 70. Where is it coming from? It is coming from this node here basically. This 70 is coming here, this 70 is going here, this 70 is coming here, and 70 is going here, which means that the game that will be played if only on this analysis would be that max would make this move, min would make this move, because that is what min can do best, it is getting 70 here and 80 there. Max would make this move and min would make this move. <coughs> if you were to flip this tree left to right, which means this game value would come on the left part of the tree then you would notice that the number of cutoffs are more essentially. In other words, if somehow the best moves are made earlier, if they are made in the left part of the tree, then the number of cutoffs will be more. And this you can sort of understand by constructing an example in which the best moves are on the, on the left hand side. In fact, if you try to construct a tree in which you fill in values so that the number of cutoffs are maximum, you will see that the game value will come from this left side of the tree. Now, that has an implication for game playing programs. If you are writing a game playing programs, you would like to generate your moves. So, for example, you are doing the Othello program and you have some set of moves to generate. You would like to generate the moves as far as possible in such a manner that the best moves are considered first and then the worst moves. So, the question is how can you order moves essentially. And remember we are discussing this in a domain independent fashion, of course, you can apply some domain knowledge to say these moves are to be considered first and so on, but in a domain independent fashion. So, any suggestions? Hmm? Heuristically, but how do you choose it heuristically? Evaluation function. So, here, here is what many people do. Okay. So, remember that when you are playing a game playing program, you are doing some search up to some k ply deep search here. Let us say it is up to this level or whatever. And you decide to make, let us say this happens to be the move that you are making essentially. This is a move that you make after you have done this whole gameplay search essentially. Then what happens? Then it is the opponent's turn to make the move because opponent is going to play the next move. You have made your move, the opponent will play a move. But what you have access to is your search tree as to below this this max node. Now you will have to make your next move at this, assuming that this happens to be the best move for min which will be the case because your analysis is such that you are considering the best moves for min. Min is taking the minimum value from all this. So, let us assume that this is the minimum value that min can get. Next time when your turn comes, you will have to play from here, which means you will be searching a tree starting from here and going down essentially. Now, you can exploit the search that you did in the previous round below this node 
because you are getting values from all the children to order the children so that the higher order min children come first and below that the lower order max children come first. So, you can order the subtree so that the best nodes are coming to the left side and if you do that you are likely to get more cutoff which in a real tournament environment would mean that your move would be faster and you would have more time for the subsequent moves essentially. You can also do some amount of analysis in opponent's time. So, this is opponent's time is here. What do we mean by opponent's time is when opponent is thinking. So, you have made your move and opponent is thinking what to move that time in the real world is available to you. You can also think of what opponent might move and what you would respond. You could do this analysis in opponent's time as well. The only thing is of course, in the game playing assignment that we are going to give you, you will not get this opponent's time because you will have a separate thread running which would be invoked only after opponent has made the move. But in the real world game playing situation where you take your own computer to play a game, you do have this time to do some further analysis and one analysis that you can do is to try to order the moves in such a way that the best moves comes first. Now, this algorithm suffers from this common trait that we have been observing throughout this course, which is that it is a blind or uninformed algorithm. It searches from left to right. Of course, this desire to order the moves is in some sense a desire to give it a direction, but given a fixed order of moves can we have an algorithm which will have a sense of direction which is which will be like a best first search algorithm. Hmm. Indeed there is such an algorithm called the SSS star algorithm, but we will take that up in the next class and we will stop here now with alpha beta.